titled my, um, my talk today, Why Physics? And I've had some great people before me telling, pushing physics also, if you've noticed. Um, my name is Deborah Ormond, and I teach at Randolph. And some of these are my students, and what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about why I chose physics. When I was in high school, I was going to be an English major and a lawyer. And then I got to college, and I took this physics class, and the fellow that was teaching it ended up being my advisor for the rest of the years I was in school. And the fellow that sat next to me, I married. So <laughs> maybe it was meant to be physics. I just, um, it's a great way to use the math skills that you have to solve problems and figure out the way things work. And I brought a couple of demonstrations today um, to talk a little bit about sound. The kind of plates I'm going to have are called chelidney plates. Um, to give you a little idea, if you are trying to get something to resonate, I um, told my daughter I was going to use her as an example. So my son was five, my daughter was two, we were at the playground. The five-year-old could swing, and he was just having fun, and the two-year-old was watching. And all she was doing was sitting there, and she was swinging her feet back and forth and back and forth, and she wasn't going anywhere. And she just didn't, and wouldn't let anybody tell her either, that you had to swing your feet at just the right time to get it to go. So if you have, if you have the push at just the right time, you can get something to resonate. So what I've gotten up here is I'm going to show you all sound waves or what standing waves on a slinky. And I've got two students, so Justin and Hema. Can you all come help? See if you all can stand up here. So we've got a slinky, but this one is a little longer than some. And so what they're going to do is the same idea as if you're on the swing, you have to, have a, you have to get things going in the right rhythm. So if Hema over here can just give it a nudge at just the right time, she's set up, she's set up a standing wave in that slinky. Do you all see that? And we call the points where, she, where the two of them are holding, those are called nodes, because the slinky's not moving. And I didn't come up with this. And so where it is moving is called an antinode, which is kind of crazy. But, so a node is where it's not moving. An antinode is where its maximum movement is. So she's going to change the frequency or how fast she's, she's, great, that's good. So she can set up, do you all see two antinodes now? Okay. And so now she's going to see if she can change the frequency again. Okay. Do we see three? Yes. Yes. How about four? You want to try? Uh, all right. Very good. Thank you. Very good. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you one of my favorite demonstrations. Um, it's chelidney plates. We're going to, I'm going to drive a square plate here. Um, I actually have a round one too. But for the round one, it's not as very, not as interesting. But the chelidney plates, we can make it go up and down. Think of kind of a drum. A drum is bound around the edges, so the middle goes up and down. Chelidney plates have a different boundary condition. In fact, if you, go, if you go into physics in college, you would take a class called boundary value problems, and you could figure out this and actually say for what frequencies it would vibrate. So what I'm going to do is Mr. Chelidney was a scientist in the 1700s, and he got his plates to vibrate by using a violin bow on them. Well, I have something that's a little more um, a little more complicated, and I can vary the frequency. Um, and then you can actually see the places where the a plate is vibrating. Because if it's a big antinode part, there's not going to be any sand. And the places where it's not vibrating, the nodes, is where the sand will build up. And I just wanted to show you just the different sorts of, um, different sorts of patterns that you get for this. Um, the other nice thing is um, we hear frequencies. And so a lot of the frequencies that this actually will vibrate are the frequencies that we as humans can hear. So let's see if what I can get started. So here's this. I'm going to start down around mm, in the 400 hertz range. And I have some sand here somewhere. Here it is. So I'm going to put sand on top of the plate. 
kind of boring. And then I can change two things over here. One is the frequency, and the other is the, um, the amplitude or the volume. Plug this in. There we go. OK. I'm going to start out. Um, this is in the 100 hertz range. And are y'all seeing something happening there? if I move it. Can y'all see it better? I'll add some more sand. There, let's see. So there's, and you'll start to hear it when it starts to, um, when it starts to resonate, it actually, um, the amplitude gets bigger, just like on a swing. Let's see. start to hear it start to resonate. starting to hear like it may resonate. So there's a nice pattern. change to a higher frequency. Let's turn off. I'm going to change to about a thousand and start with the higher frequencies. Okay, so here we go. So with the higher frequencies you're going to get more pretty patterns. through and mathematically solve for all these different vibration modes. Let's see. Oops, I'm out of time. I'm going to stop. I have better to higher frequencies with more, um, more patterns that I could show you. I just want to end with one last thing. Um, if you get bored at the Thanksgiving dinner table, 
And you can always pick up the spoon, the serving spoon, and take it. And I want you to look at your reflections on both sides. And you'll find that they're different on both sides. If you'd like to know how that works, then you need to take physics. Thank you.